And actually, I, 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 was, I would like to start with, uh, with like giving I me mean, talk to all to you about the, your specific experience with your ecosystem and the connectivity that you had to others. I mean, we have India and America, America and Africa, Europe and, and, and China, um, Italy, which is also Europe, uh, Italy and, and Hong Kong. So there's lots of experience. Italian. I did it with this, you know, with the, with the fingers. Uh, uh, yeah, German. no, just why don't we like, why don't we just start and uh, get it going? Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, uh, obviously we're thrilled here um, to, you know, represent and promote the Hong Kong startup ecosystem. When I always get asked to be very short, I say Hong Kong is probably one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world because it holds true to so many aspects in terms of different industries and verticals um, that are getting disrupted. Everybody talks about fintech, but uh, uh, it's not the only sector here in Hong Kong, and we have uh, things like uh, edtech and travel tech and textile tech that you don't find anywhere else in the world. And it's true in terms of the nationality of founders. Uh, one third of founders are international. It's true in terms of the age of founders that spread from really youngsters to seasoned career switches, and it's true in terms of gender. So Hong Kong is one of those gender diverse ecosystems. Thank you, uh, I'm Richie and I'm in the Search China team. Actually, Slush is like a leading tech ecosystem and also their events um, organized in Europe and also Asia. And uh, uh, the one interesting thing is the Slush is organized by the volunteers. It's a non-profit uh, ecosystem and events. Uh, to how the uh, startup to growth, and uh, when uh, I'm especially to represent China, actually I think all of you already um, know a lot of uh, leading technology or growth is already happened there in, in China. So uh, in the following session, I can share some interesting um, as, uh, aspect or um, things I I, I can uh, find in China. Yeah, thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Olu Oyinsan. I'm managing partner of a VC firm called We Capital. We're an early stage technology fund. Based in Boston, operations in San Francisco and Lagos, Nigeria. We actually do really early stage investments in tech startups in a different region of the world, Sub-Saharan Africa. So we invest in early stage companies in Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, and South Africa. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. About a year and a half ago, I packed my bags. I used to work for a uh, Silicon Valley bank, early stage practice in Boston, and moved back home to where I'm originally from in Lagos. Because we saw that the deal flow and the kind of, um, the kind of gap that there was in terms of capital and impact were huge, and someone needed to fill that gap. And so right now, usually between the United States, around the world, and Africa, really bring in resources those companies need to succeed. There's a common saying that um, brilliance is well spread, equally spread across the world, but opportunity is not. So we decided to be that bridge between uh, the opportunity and the brilliance that exists around the world. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Amit Agrawal. Uh, it's a fairly common name because Amit was nicknamed for one of the leading Bollywood movie stars, uh, which makes the current Amazon India head by the same name. Uh, even the organizers just got it wrong. So I saw at Labnol, this is the, probably one of the most viral blogs from India by a guy with similar name. It's not me. I don't write uh, much, uh, thankfully. So, so you can differentiate. Uh, I'm Oki Poki part is right, uh, former YouTube India head is right. Uh, we very often get socially pinged by each other's uh, wannabe networks. People who want to connect with the Amazon guy sometimes land up calling me or something like that. But, but coming back by I'm here uh, is uh, because I've seen two global journeys as of now in my life. One is uh, I was credited to bringing YouTube to India, building up the whole local ecosystem. Uh, the content piece, uh, marketing, and so on around YouTube and scaling that. Uh, post Google, uh, I, I started an initiative called India Goes Global, uh, which took Indian startup ecosystem global and, and created a huge value uh, over two to three years. Uh, Oki Poki is actually a very local initiative uh, for early childhood learning, uh, wherein we help accelerate learning uh, 
uh, language learning skills for children between age two to five years. Uh, so that's what I do. Hi, I am Stefano. Um, and um, I'm an accountant, a very, very funny job, but I'm also a runner and a comedian on the side, but I do have a, a, a real job that is accountant. And uh, I like to call myself in this perspective as a doctor for startups. Uh, I've been a startup for myself, so I did, I did it all the way up and I even exited. Uh, exiting for startups seems to be not really cool. Raising money seems cooler than exiting a company, but I did the whole process and uh, I feel like that I'm now complete and I, um, I'm very happy to, to, to share my experience with, uh, with the new ecosystem in Hong Kong. Um, only one point I want to make to introduce is that thanks to Hong Kong and thanks to Hong Kong ecosystem, I was able and our corporation today was able to form something that is more than 200 people and uh, I think that has been the fertile soil for um, entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial projects that are coming. Um, this is very true for European, that is uh, probably uh, what I know the most. And through several programs, we have been supporting European companies to set up here and to really enjoy and scale in Asia. Uh, when I say Hong Kong, I don't say just Hong Kong, I say Asia because and then we'll discuss it later on a technical perspective, even technical down to the boring numbers, Hong Kong makes a very much a lot of sense for companies to set up here the sub operation that then tap into the into the Asian market. Um, thank you. Great, that's, that's lots of expertise of different fields and disciplines. So I was wondering, when we talk about connecting um, ecosystems, do we just simply mean like transferring business models to other markets or do, does it mean like to just foster like other ecosystems to just start in the first place? So what, what do you make out of, I mean, of the title that we discuss here? Because obviously you all are wanderers between the worlds and you may have ch faced challenges. You cannot just bring like a, an, uh, an Indian model to Nigeria and a Nigerian model to Germany and a Chinese model to Finland. So how do, we, how do you cope with that? What, is your, what are your learnings that you can share with the audience? Can I start first? Sorry, I'm the fastest. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, actually, that's, that's a very nice question and cool because uh, one day I was um, with our consul general as an Italian guy, you know, he comes from politician like kind of background. So you expect a guy that is, you know, a little bit slow, government and stuff. And we were having, we were having lunch. Um, I'm not trying hard. I don't want to make you laugh, but we were a little bit drunk, like at more than a little bit. We had a couple of glasses for lunch. And we we're discussing about innovation and blah, blah, blah. And ideas started flowing and I said, what is the big problem for it? Why there are no young people coming up and doing business? Why you have European clients, you don't have any Italian clients? I said, I don't know. Let's try to do something together. So we created a little program, maybe Start It Asia, Start It like Start it, dot Asia, And we just made a little competition and the Italian um, universities were very receptive to spread the voice of a program where we will fly five Italian startups in Hong Kong. For one week, we mentor them. We introduce them to like private equity or VCs or business angels, whatever. Uh, partners, uh, accelerators. The winner will stay here for one year, all right? And that was an incredibly interesting experience because you understand how we selecting the right startups to come you need to understand how those business models would adapt in Asia. So it's like uh, something that works in Europe doesn't necessarily work here. So we need to be smart as selector to do it or trying to understand whether or not the founders are willing to pivot and adapt their uh, ideas to Asia. So, or to Hong Kong, so to speak. Uh, the biggest challenge, it was the commitment from uh, startups they are looking to scale in Asia because they need it they know that they need the market the market is what they need to justify high valuation to collect money right 
So it's actually chicken egg. They were reluctant to invest resources until they understood, touching with their hands, what was going on. I mean, today, if one of our friends and startup from the first edition is here, because probably it was one out of five, it doesn't matter, but he made it and he's coming back. So you can see that trying, Hong Kong is really giving opportunities, but it's really very much up to the startup to, or to, I don't like to call it startup, to the company or to the newly formed company or whatever, to come here being flexible and try to adapt. So crossing ecosystems is really like about understanding very much what is going on here and trying to adapt in a way and trying to invest. Yeah, I think if I can build on on that, I mean, obviously don't just take a business model that is working in one part of the world and you can execute it exactly the same way. I mean, WHUB is a power connector. It's basically connecting you to the resources you need to scale and that means having access to local resources exactly what you are saying, right? The Italian founders need to come here, need to understand they can source local talent, local visibility, local investors, local know-how to then adapt the business model. And I think one of the things, what your question was, like what is really the, 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 the DNA or the particular, what does this ecosystem stand for and can help a company to do? In one word for Hong Kong, it's really the ultra connectivity and density that allows Hong Kong to be then the launch pad either into China or into Southeast Asia. And I don't know, I mean, just, I'm also curious about, you know, India as well as, you know, Africa, as well as, I mean, the Chinese market or, you know, back home. Um, what, what do you think your, your ecosystem stands for? Sure, so I'll, I'll take on from there. And uh, I was about to talk about how I look at the India story when I'm sitting here in Hong Kong for the first time ever. Um, I'm, I'm talking about an era that's powered by internet. I'm talking about a country which is extremely facilitated by our current Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, uh, who's increasingly made it very, very simple uh, to, to enter India. It's not too simple, uh, but it's relatively a lot more simple than, let's say, about five years ago. Uh, I, I, I just say, tell entrepreneurs, and I'm going to just make an assumption that a lot of people here are entrepreneurs, uh, start thinking global in your strategy. So, so what do you need to do when you start? Uh, you need to build your prototypes. Uh, figure out markets where you can build it faster or lower cost. For some of you, not for everybody, for some of you, maybe an outsourcing hub out of a Bangalore or New Delhi might make sense. Uh, some of you need to test out your market or product market fit, and you need a low cost strategy to validate your assumption. And very often you'd realize uh, your product works differently in different geographies. Uh, I don't know how many of you have had an experience in scaling businesses beyond more than one country. It's usually a very, very different journey in each country. Uh, as we realized when I was doing YouTube or with my India Goes Global journey, uh, I saw very, very different versions of the product uh, emerging in each market. And, and therefore, for some of you, India might be a low cost uh, validation place because media costs are much lower. The consuming class is much bigger. So, so any segment that you look at, uh, high income individuals, uh, single old people, single young people, just women, just men, uh, parents, young parents, parents of teenage kids, teenagers, everything runs into tens of millions. Uh, so it's huge enough for you to play with and experiment. And for some of you, uh, it may not apply to all of you. For example, if you're building something in Mandarin, please don't test in India. Uh, but, but in general, if you're an English-based service, you will find an easy testing market. For some of you, just because of the sheer 500 million internet user base is unthinkable in many countries. Most countries don't have populations like that, forget internet populations like that, with the exception of China. And, and therefore, it may be an expansion opportunity in a serious way. The, the only thing I'm saying is, sometimes either we ignore these opportunities we're just too focused on local world. The world has become connected, more so than not. How often have I leveraged global resources to help my own startup at Okie Pokey? Second is the opportunities are also wider to expand and quicker and easier to do. Uh, but what I see is sometimes uh, founders, they don't go deep enough with a new geographical expansion. It's, it's actually uh, not trivial. Uh, so you need to think harder, find 
a local strategy that makes sense for each market. Uh, but because of internet, there are markets like Upwork, if you need a freelancer, you can, you can hire across AngelList, for example, and things like that. I don't know what works here in Hong Kong. I'm giving you Indian platform examples that are very viral in India, and, and be able to crack that opportunity. But, but just go a little bit deeper. So, so don't fall into the trap of saying, I, I'm a Hong Kong startup and that's what I'm, I'm here to do. All of us here represent uh, a much broader global, global opportunities that we've seen already in our journeys. And at the same time, don't think global is trivial. Don't think adding a country is the same as adding another neighborhood in Hong Kong. It's, it's slightly non-trivial. Yeah, I think yeah. like that's, that's very accurate also in the, in the sense of like looking from the consumer end. Let's just look from uh, when we continue like from the ecosystems end itself. You said like uh, Hong Kong has offers a lot, but also it has a tradition as a banking place. So obviously like if you look into it, you'll say, oh, financial new services may emerge from here rather than from somewhere else, right? Or like look like, I mean, geographies also shape uh, what you what you create like Israel has found like uh, looked into uh, energy transportation biomed because also like the space is limited I was just come from Taiwan where they like struggle to think what is going to be the next step because geography as an island limits you so and again an ecosystem of, 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 of VCs and young founders incubators that's just like what is like the next level of an of a, of an, of a country's economy if you will so that's we look at it from the consumer's perspective, but let's like when we continue to like bear in mind like the ecosystem in itself and its growth. Um, okay. Actually, I, I would love to share. Uh, for yeah, thank you. Uh, something about China. I think uh, here uh, in Hong Kong and also uh, um, outside China, and um, people always um, will be afraid of the China market and always think about China is another word because um, they uh, in, in China we always use another platform uh, uh, except the Facebook YouTube for example and we use WeChat we use uh, Weibo we use uh, TikTok and it's all the uh, other channels and uh, the people out of China uh, may not be very familiar so people will always afraid of how to get into the China markets and um, as, as me, because in the slush is a, a European uh, organization, but have the China uh, operation teams. Uh, it would be interesting to discover that um, uh, some of the European uh, test stops, they are very interesting in the China market, but they have no idea how to do. Um, so I think um, you just mentioned the ecosystem. I think it's always a good uh, way to um, go through or work with, partner with the uh, uh, local or the global uh, ecosystem uh, platform or um, organizations such as all of us uh, we are in uh, to partner with this uh, global uh, networks uh, and um, utilize the network who have already been uh, operating global as bad and also they have a China as bad and to get more idea what what how they can um, operate uh, in the mainland especially and uh, I think uh, there's always a way they can uh, find their um, good uh, people uh, to uh, work with them together for the China market and they um, I think uh, it, it, it's a needed uh, for uh, they need to have the Chinese partner, I think, always to uh, work with the China market uh, if they want to. Yeah. That's very interesting. Um, so, from my own side, having uh, some visibility into the ecosystems around the world, uh, especially uh, previously working for some companies that had operations around and seeing how the tech ecosystems align. I'll say something that's pretty interesting about the African or Sub-Saharan um, Africa emerging ecosystem, apart from the fact that it's quite similar to some of the developing Asian countries, because I always say this, for more of the Western world, we almost didn't see the footpath, the trail. We just woke up and, whoa, they developed, right? But for some countries like China, uh, Hong Kong, Indonesia, India, we could still see the path, right? And say, 10 years ago it was here. So we could put markers on the ground. 
And what I um, have noticed for many of the um, African uh, tech ecosystems is basically that some of the kind of verticals that actually generate the most impact and even return for investors are the uh, verticals at the bottom of the pyramid, right? And so for a lot of big uh, investment companies, the reason why they haven't played in that space till now is sometimes they look at it, there's the population, right? Sub-Saharan Africa alone, about 1.2 billion people, 75% of those are under the ages of 35. That's a huge lifetime value. But usually what it is, is the purchasing power, right? And so for the kind of vertical that we've seen doing very well, are the ones who kind of talk at the bottom of the pyramid, that way it, re it normalizes the numbers for purchasing power, right? So when I'm selling something that's a dollar, two dollars, all I have to ask is how many people are there? Because I know everyone can afford it, right? And that's why even the advanced technologies, machine learning, AI, big data, we have to apply it to basic problems like financial inclusion, credit scoring, ag tech, health tech, education technology, logistics, mobility. And I've seen that basically that's one of the major differences between what you see in other parts of the world and the problems that, are, that everyday people on the continent currently face. And some of the most successful companies are in those spaces. Yesterday I was coming here and saw that one of the companies we were working with a few years ago just closed a $100 million uh, round Series D. And these companies are usually in those spaces. Financial technology, education. This uh, one was in education technology. And that's what I think is the major difference that I've picked out between ecosystems around the world. Those ones that attack big wallet transactions, <coughs> surface needs. But for those kind of countries, they're still down the BOP. You need to attack something that goes to the everyday um, life of that customer and has to buy a share of their wallet. So I think that one stood out to me. That, that's stunning experiences you share here. I mean, I'm, we are already on the home stretch for this, for this panel and the organizers asked me to, to end this on a bright note of you guys sharing, uh, almost like testimonial-wise, like your, your, your favorite insight, if you will, like a takeaway for the audience, for the entrepreneurs here, for the investors here who seek to be more engaging in the global uh, ecosystem. What would be like the takeaway you wish, like from your experience, the people here in the audience to take home to their businesses? Um, um, again, I think China is a big market for uh, every startup, uh, every global tech startups, and the mo mobile uh, penetration actually in China is um, um, bigger than in the US. So there are still a lot of opportunity uh, in China and also the money, as uh, the as startup we said, a lot of VC active uh, investors in China. So it would be always a good uh, market um, for the startup to uh, come into China to expand your market. Um, the way how you work well in China, I think um, again, you need to um, find a good partner and also work with the uh, ecosystem, uh, the platform uh, together to find a way how how you can work better in China, yeah. Great. Um, I think something I would um, take away, or want everyone to take away, there is already no knowledge of the fact that Hong Kong, uh, China, the rest of Asia and Africa are in bed right now, doing a lot of business together. A lot of it has been more on the infrastructure side, uh, but the amazing thing now is that there's a lot to do on the collaboration and technology side. Right, the markets share a lot of similarities. A lot of companies here, even around, I've seen some technology can, that can be adapted to local markets. So I think um, there's a lot of business to be done, both in terms of startups expanding their business to similar markets, or investors looking to tap into the impact and return that the booming market is generating. I always say that I think that market is similar to what the Asian boom was 10 years ago and it's the time right now. And so those collaborations, there should be open doors for them, both in terms of 
expanding your businesses to include African consumers and expanding your portfolio of investment to include African companies. Actually, if I'm just going to jump in, I actually want people to take three things away about Hong Kong, right? So the first one, if you're a very early stage startup, come here because to test your product market fit, it's ideal, as we said, it's hyper connected, it's super condensed, it has a very diverse consumer base. The second thing is if you are um, a late stage company, come here as well, right? Because it's the ideal launch pad into any part of Asia. Uh, the third thing is you can do that in a record time. Again, three years ago we had zero unicorns, now we have the second highest density in the world per capita. So on the ending note, at the end, I hope that we all agree it, it doesn't really matter which ecosystem you choose at the beginning, maybe at the end it's all about connecting globally because any startup per definition wants to be a global success. Yeah, um, on this note, uh, important in Hong Kong as, as pretty much everywhere, execute, execute at the perfection because you can have the coolest idea on the planet. Uh, if you don't execute it properly, it's just a cheap idea. And uh, Hong Kong is particularly true in this. If you execute, if you're fast, if you're up to speed, you can really, really tap in the biggest market in the world. And, when, and again, I want to remark that Hong Kong is not just Hong Kong. Hong Kong is not just China. Hong Kong is pretty much all Asia. Got a flight, in four hours, you're pretty much everywhere. I'm not promoting Hong Kong as a jurisdiction, but I've been working in this uh, city for many years, but I don't feel like I'm working in a city. I'm feeling like I'm working in a, in a union of country where I was actually able to scale in different countries from Shanghai to Singapore to Japan, trying to understand the different the difference between uh, the geographic, all right? And then very important after execution is win a share of the company wallet, of the, of the customer wallet. This, this is something extremely important. It's not just about scalability. It's really about satisfying a social need. Any unicorn is satisfying a social need. I mean, anyone. L look at Airbnb, I mean, Airbnb, Uber. They are democratizing. They are tracking where you go. Why Uber is amazing in Mexico? Because you can finally track where you hell you're going with a driver. That's the truth. And this is satisfying a real social need. So how to impactfully win a share of the wallet of your customer? This is something that should be the North Star. Um, I would just like to add, I already talked about why it makes a lot of sense to have a global strategy than not. But what has really surprised me and I'm extremely passionate about is this informal collaboration that's begun to happen between startup founders globally. So uh, when I started, you know, uh, so, so what, uh, what was said here earlier, that China is this, this some other planet sometimes. Uh, looking at where I was coming out of, I was coming out of Google, half the products are not allowed in China and so on. And, and what I realize is coming into any conference, if you can consciously start to leverage these informal channels of information, uh, which these startup founders have created over WeChat sometimes, or WhatsApp groups sometimes, or something else, uh, this information asymmetry is breaking. And it's breaking for real, it's breaking for good. Uh, I wasn't even aware of all that's being done here in, in Hong Kong till as little as about a year back uh, when Hong Kong rise and in fact uh, Tech Summit and all that began to come my way. And that all happened to these informal entrepreneur to entrepreneur talks and channels over WhatsApp chats, over small calls here and there that began to happen. And, and just leverage those because they can be your real unfair advantage in a very competitive world. Yeah, from no, no, no it's good. No, All right, cool. That's lovely. So, Karina, thanks for putting together this lovely panel. I learned a lot. I hope you too. Thank you for uh, coming up here. Thank you for joining and give those guys a hand. Thank you.